welcome guys to our video today uh, it is also another very interesting video we're going to do today uh, and uh, as I promised you nowadays we are doing a video every day kind of if you have not watched the video which premiered today on what we call the uh, retrograde ejaculation you can check on it it's very interesting it is really growing so kindly guys check on it guys the channel is uh, nasvin and kindly if you have not subscribed i want to encourage you to subscribe today we have a very interesting topic called schizophrenia 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 that is our topic for today i don't know if you have ever heard of uh, schizophrenia and if you have not heard of it that's why i'm here to explain what is uh, what is schizophrenia and also the effects complication treatment and also issues regarding schizophrenia schizophrenia is a a, a, a psychotic condition is a mental or what you call a mental disorder characterized by disturbances in thinking so it affects the thinking the the perception uh, the behavior the social interactions and also it affects uh, and uh, this it is said from the my research which i did it affects approximately one percent of the population uh, worldwide and uh, typically emerges in late adolescence and also early, early adulthood so uh, it is a very common when we talk about one percent of the of the of the world population I think for now we are heading to around the population of the uh, of the of the of the of the we are doing around nine billion nine billion population so we have China as the number one in population and also we have other European countries with the least uh, population but uh, when we talk about one percent of eight uh, around nine billion of our population that's a big junk of uh, of people who are affected by this schizophrenia so that's why i'm going to talk about it so when we talk about schizophrenia how does one present with a schizophrenia in symptoms schizophrenia is associated with a wide range of uh, uh, wide range of symptoms which can be categorized into positive negative and cognitive uh, 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 symptoms number one when we talk about uh, positive symptoms we are talking about uh, this involves the presence of abnormal experience or behavior and also hallucinations such as uh, when we uh, when we talk about hallucinations is when one hearing the voices which are not re in really life so what that's what you call hallucinations hearing uh, voices delusional that is uh, having uh, false beliefs disorganized thinking and also abnormal motor behavior so that is uh, when we talk about positive symptoms in schizophrenia when we talk about the negative uh, symptoms we have uh, this involves uh, the visits in the normal uh, functioning such as reduced emotional and uh, uh, emotional expression we have uh, where we have fl what we call flat affect social withdrawal withdrawal apathy and reduced uh, motiva motivation so that those are the negative uh, symptoms and when we talk about the cognitive uh, symptoms these affect cognitive processes processes such as uh, memory where one cannot remember well attention where one cannot really concentrate and give attention and execute uh, a function so these are cognitive uh, symptoms they can include the difficulties with concentration uh, memory deficits that is now when we talk about cognitive deficits and the impaired decision uh, making so guys the we have those three classifications of uh, of symptoms of uh, schizophrenia i've talked about uh, the negative uh, symptoms i've talked about the positive uh, uh, symptoms and the cognitive uh, symptoms as i've explained and if you have not understood well you can go back you can uh, replay the video and uh, and hear or listen to what i've said about the cognitive what I've said about the negative and also the positive. What are the causes of uh, schizophrenia? The exact cause of schizophrenia is not fully understood. 
and uh, but it is believed it involves combination of the biology, bi uh, genetic, biological, and also environment, and uh, also psycho psychological factors. So risk factors for schizophrenia, when we talk about it, include your family history of the disorder, prenatal exposure to infections, uh, or toxins, complications during birth, and uh, and early uh, childhood trauma, and also or adversity. So also, we, when we, we talk about uh, another co another co when we talk about the causes, also we talk about the neurobiology research which has been done on schizophrenia also suggests that the abnormalities in the brain structure and the function contribute can contribute to the development of uh, schizophrenia these uh, abnormalities include the neurotransmitter imbalances particularly dopamine and also the glutamate so the combination of the brain uh, structure and function also can affect from the researches which has been done which can affect the one to develop uh, this uh, schizophrenia thing. Also, uh, alteration in the brain connectivity and the uh, and circuitry, and also and the structural abnormalities in certain brain regions, such as uh, what we call prefrontal cortex and uh, the hippo, uh, hippocampus. When we have the abnormal connection to the prefrontal cortex and also hippocampus, we have uh, a person developing uh, the uh, schizophrenia. On the diagnosis, uh, when how can one med, uh, diagnosis be made on the, uh, on the schizophrenia? Schizophrenia is, base, is uh, based on a thorough clinical assessment, including the review of the symptoms and medical history and psychiatry evaluation. So diagnostic criteria, they include uh, uh, what we call men, uh, st statistical manual of mental uh, disorders or DSM uh, to come up with uh, the proper diagnosis of schizophrenia or the international classification of disease where we use the ICD-10 uh, where they are used to the, this the one which is used to classify and also come up with the uh, proper diagnosis of uh, schizophrenia. On the treatment part of it, what is involved? Schizophrenia is, uh, involves a combination of antipsychotics medication, psychological interventions, and also supportive services to come up and help uh, the patients. So, and, and psychotics medication help alleviate positive symptoms and prevent the relapse. Newer, atyp newer atypical and psychotics are often preferred due to the reduced risk of the side effects. So we have an psychotic classification of the drugs called the new, uh, the new, the newer atypical and psychotics, which are introduced to these uh, patients, so that because they don't have much side effects according to the studies, we have psychological interventions as a mode of management of the schizophrenia, such as uh, individual therapy, family therapy, cognitive behavior therapy, what we call CBT, social skills training, and also to help the individual manage symptoms and also improve functioning and enhance quality of life, guys. So also we have supportive services, including case management, vocational rehabilitation, and our housing assistance can provide ongoing support and assistance with the daily living activities. What is the prognosis or what is the end product of uh, schizophrenia? The progress of schizophrenia varies depending on the factors such as the severity of the symptoms, treatment, adherence, and access to support uh, services. With appropriate treatments and support, many individuals with schizophrenia can experience significant improvement in the symptoms and lead to fulfilling lives. However, uh, schizophrenia is a chronic condition and long-term management is often necessary to, pre to prevent relapse and promote uh, the recovery. Overall, schizophrenia is a complex and challenging mental disorder that requires comprehensive and multidisciplinary treatment approaches. Uh, for early detection is needed, intervention is needed immediately, and ongoing support is very important for schizophrenia management. Uh, when we talk about, the uh, like I've mentioned, on the causes, the exact cause of schizophrenia are not fully understood but the research suggests that the combination of the genetic, biological, environmental, and psychological factors can contribute to it is, uh, it is development. And uh, I'm going to give, uh, in a nutshell, 
and, and break it down very well for you so that you get to understand uh, the, the, the main uh, cause, the main factors which are believed to play a role in the onset of the schizophrenia. So number one is about genetics. How does genetics co contribute to schizophrenia? So schizophrenia tends to learn in families, indicating a genetic condition, a component to the disorder. So it is likely to learn in, if you have a brother, a sister, a mother, a father, a grandfather, an aunt who, 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 who is experiencing the schizophrenia, you are also likely exposed to that one. So individuals with a family history of schizophrenia are at, at, at risk of developing the condition. However, no single gene is uh, responsible. From the genetics or the study of the genes is not really related to the gene part of it. Uh, is uh, so also it is believed that uh, multiple genetic variations are thought to interact with the environment factors to increase the susceptibility uh, to make one susceptible for the condition. So that's a hard word, susceptibility. Susceptible from the word susceptible. So also number two cause is about the brain structure. Uh, when we talk about brain structure and function, abnormalities in the brain structure and function are, have been observed in the individuals with the schizophrenia. So these abnormalities include changes in the neurotransmitter levels, particularly the what we call dopamine and also the glutamate. So uh, alterations in the brain connectivity and circuitry and structural abnormalities in certain uh, brain regions such as the prefrontal uh, cortex, hippocampus and the thalamus. So these brain changes may affect cognitive function, perception and also regulation, guys, and also contribute to the symptoms of uh, schizophrenia. Number three cause is about the prenatal and the perinatal factors. Uh, when we talk about prenatal and the perinatal factors, it means that the exposure to a certain uh, prenatal and perinatal factors has, have been associated with increased risk of schizophrenia. These factors include maternal infection during the pregnancy uh, because uh, prenatal exposure to toxins or substances such as cannabis or tobacco uh, or complications during birth, birth, what we call like, especially when we have hypoxia. Hypoxia is when we have reduced uh, oxygen to the brain during the birth of the child. And this is where you get the child does not uh, cry immediately after birth. So when we have such kind of a hypoxia thing, uh, the maternal, the perinatal, and uh, uh, perinatal factors, and also uh, uh, perinatal factors and the perinatal factors can influence the the thing. Maternal stress uh, or malnutrition during pregnancy can also affect, can contribute to it. Also. When we have uh, factors that d disrupt the normal uh, brain development, they increase the this kind. Of, they increase the risk of one developing schizophrenia uh, later in life as uh, as as the as the kid progresses progresses in life. That's why we need to really, really focus uh, on prenatal and perinatal care uh, of that those mothers, so that we don't predispose the child to the schizophrenia later in life. Environmental stressors are also one of the contributing factor to this, uh, uh, to this schizophrenia because environmental stressors, stressors such as uh, childhood trauma where maybe a child was abused during the childhood, also urban up upbringing, they say also stresses of the urban upbringing, social adversity and uh, migration have been linked to increase the risk of uh, schizophrenia. So because stressful life experiences uh, can contribute to, uh, can, uh, can contribute or trigger the onset of schizophrenia in susceptible uh, individuals or exacerbate the existing symptoms, uh, uh, existing uh, symptoms. So chronic stress may also contribute to the changes in the brain function and increase the vulnerability to what we call uh, psychosis, guys. Also drug use, substance, especially substance abuse, particularly the cannabis and also alcohol and stimulants has been associated with increased risk of uh, schizophrenia. Uh, so cannabis use is particularly has been linked to the onset of the psychosis and may exacerbate the symptoms in individuals with schizophrenia. So substance abuse can disrupt the neurotransmission system and alter the brain function, 
increasing the susceptibility susceptibility to psychosis and also schizophrenia. The other words as something I'm saying, it exposes one to psychosis and uh, schizophrenia. So psychological factors also contribute to schizophrenia. And when we talk about this, we mean that uh, a childhood trauma, adverse life experiences, and chronic stress may contribute to the development. So tra traumatic events or st stressful experiences during childhood or adolescence may increase the vulnerability to psychosis and influence expression of symptoms in life. Guys, it's important to note that uh, schizophrenia is a complex and multi multifaceted uh, 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 disorder because and there is no single cause which we can really associate it with. It is multifaceted disorder. Well, so instead, uh, schizophrenia is likely arises from the interaction of multiple genetic, from the genetic part of it, uh, biological, environmental, and psychological uh, factors, guys. So further research is needed to better understand the underlying mechanisms of schizophrenia and develop more effective.